subscribe now and press the bell icon. Never miss an update. This show is in association with ABC Group, ABC Prime Trade Private Limited. Mobile number plus nine one nine eight four five zero zero two eight zero three. For more details, contact Mr. Deepak Malik. Phone number plus nine one nine eight four five zero zero two eight. Zero three. Namaste, Konnichiwa. Welcome to the Nukutewari Show. Let's talk business. And today, too, we have very special guest, and he is none other than Mr. Ogawa, and he is the executive counselor of Nippon Steel. So, Ogawa san, Nukutewari Show. Let's talk business. A iokoso. Thank you very much for inviting inviting me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for making time and giving, sharing your precious knowledge with us. So the first question would be, how was your experience working in India? Actually, I started working in India from year 2015. And then since then, uh, yes, I was the exec, uh, yes, uh, executive director uh, of the representing company of the Nippon Steel in India. And then as also concurrently, I had another business as a chairman of a venture in India. And then it's, it took approximately three and a half years in India. This is my experience. We have experience work, living and working in India. So how was the experience of working with Indian? Oh, very Indian nice. People? Very nice, I love them. Actually, they are very friendly. And mm -hmm. then, yes, and they're also very much industrials and then hard workers, hard working people. And then, yes, but sometimes talkative. Sometimes talkative. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's okay. And then, yes, I get used to that. And then, yes, yes I was very much comfortable with working with them. They're okay. very much serious and, uh, yes, very good, friendly. Wonderful. So, Actually, as you said, that you really had working good working experience with Indian. But why then we find so many problems between India when it comes to business between India and Japan? Because most of the Japanese companies they're going to China instead of India, like used to go to at least. So why is that? Maybe because of the location, first of all, mm -hmm. because China is the neighboring company of Japan. And then also, when China uh, had a certain policy uh, to invite any factories from overseas, including Japan, yes, they have they provided some provided uh, newcomers with certain uh, incentive program uh, to uh, expedite uh, such uh, transfer uh, of the production I have from Japan, and then based on that. Yes, so that's why China was called as a kind of a factory, you know, uh, um, a factory of the world. So, and then also uh, Japanese, Japan's farm mainly uh, comprises, how can I say, kind of um, industrial people, uh, many, many industrial people, uh, maybe much larger than merchant. So, uh, seeking for a certain benefit, uh, from the perspective of the industrial, maybe many Japanese uh, farms, especially uh, manufacturers, uh, rushed to China in the past. So this is the reason I get. It's, it's my personal understanding, but this is the reason, main reason, why uh, so many Japanese people were uh, uh, was uh, were having the business in China in the past. But now, because of some change of the policy in China, uh, now uh, they uh, they try to change the uh, major players uh, from 
foreigners to domestic people. So that's why in the past, any Japanese farms uh, had been enjoying the certain benefit by producing such their own products in China to export all over the world. But afterwards, now recently, uh, they are squeezing the number of the kind of opportunity for foreigners to conduct a business in China. Instead, they are trying to uh, very much aggressively uh, providing certain opportunity to domestic people to having the business in China. So many people uh, used to be outside from China, uh, came back to China once again, and then could start up the business in China again. So such kind of kind of U-turn uh, kind of a movement uh, is one of the factor at this point of time. And then sure. India has no such kind of movement and no, I'm going to say, uh, no exclusive action, action so far and very comfortably uh, receiving the person from outside, but because of the some uh, less perception from the, among Japanese people about India. So this is one of the biggest, this was the one of the obstacle for Japanese people to come to India because of the, yeah, on top of the location issue. So now what you said that China is, now they prefer their own people to do business in China. Exactly, yeah, so, my understanding. So that is, uh, do you think it can be beneficial for India? So more companies can go to India? I think, uh, to be frank, uh, India person, Indian people has a, a very strong power to be independent and then very much kind and lovely people, but they have a strong spirit uh, to be independent. So even though we are uh, Japanese people or Japanese farms have the chance or opportunity to go into India, India has its own way. So yes, if we could stay in India as a one of the member to uh, to to be com uh, consist uh, to be the uh, to uh, to be included in uh, Indian society, it's okay. But uh, they just receive as a kind of one person. But uh, India itself has some own spirit uh, to be independent. So it depends on the uh, commas or like a. a, a, a who are uh, willing to come to India, come into India. It depends. Exactly. So uh, very rightly you said. And uh, now when we introduce, like, uh, would you like to go to India and do business? The Japanese businessmen, they have some stereotype idea, like <laughs> India is uh, this, India is that. So India is only curry and naan. They don't, they don't really don't want to get out of those ideas. So do you think those things also kind, kind of responsible? I have no clear answer uh, on your questions, but uh, it depends. It depends on the person. And then now, uh, many, many Japanese people are still working in India, uh, maybe led by women. So yes, once women uh, moved to India, yes, they were so much, how could I say, fascinated by Indian society and the Indian like a culture. So maybe thanks to such kind of new wave uh, uh, led by or, uh, women or kind of new people, maybe such movement will be changed uh, slightly, slightly, but anyway, for sure. Yeah, it might. It should change, definitely. So um, there is a like, uh, I also worked for Japanese company, corporate. I started my life with Japanese corporate. So a Japanese always, they like to keep themselves within themselves, you know, and uh, like they have to have their own culture, own food, own thing. They they also don't like to get out of their comfort zone. Do you think uh, this is this is like, would you like to give some suggestion to Japanese businessmen? So because Indians are quite kind of, they, they have their own way. And if, you know, you are in India, I think uh, like if I'm in Japan, I have to eat Japanese food and I have to at least try and I have to speak Japanese as well. So do you think these things, Japanese businessmen, they should try? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. And uh, actually I love the Indian foods for sure. Yes, even in Japan. Yes, I sometimes yes, enjoy Indian food. 
<laughs> and then, uh, of course, India has own culture and Japan has own culture. But uh, mm -hmm. from the perspective of the, some biogeogra biogeography, uh, no, 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 uh, some kind of geopolitical uh, way of thinking, uh, India and Japan has a kind of similar natures uh, with each other. And then Japan has a very, a very spe specific country. A one uh, tribe, one culture. It's India, same. India has one tribe and one culture. In a, in a, so this is much different from other cases. For example, Chinese culture uh, covers many, many countries. Uh, Maybe sometimes including some Southeast Asia countries as well. And also some kind of like a Atlantic culture includes many, many countries. Yes, Western culture includes many, many countries, including US and then other European countries. But in India, maybe from the perspective of the culture, uh, this is very much independent. And then Japan also very much independent. So two countries are very, very similar. And then they are not biased by others. So from this aspect, and we, we can mix up and understand each other. Maybe we can ask for more synergy effect for sure. Very, very uh, rightly you said, yeah, we are culturally also, we are very much connected from thousands of years, actually, culturally, uh, when it comes to religion also, we are very much connected. But um, there are still a bit of gap that the India, the deserved business from Japan, India is not getting and the Japanese businessmen and also they're a bit scared to go to India. So I think uh, that gap actually, your suggestion would be highly appreciated for the both countries businessmen, like how we can just fill this gap and can be more business wise, we can be more prosperous. Yeah, to be frank, yes, uh, yes. There are certain advantage in the business culture in India, and then certain disadvantage in Japanese culture, and um, business culture in Japan as well. So both has both have uh, the advantage and disadvantage advantage as well. For example, uh, in case of Japanese business nat nature, maybe a kind of stereotype way of thinking is one of disadvantage. So which will squeeze the opportunity to enlarge its specs. But India, maybe too much a top-down system uh, would be one of disadvantage. So for example, just focusing on that part, and uh, if we pick up the size of the company, there are many, many companies uh, originated in Japan who has a larger scale uh, all over the world. But the specific feature of such companies are for example, the size of the top management is so so, but the thanks to the power of the organization, the size of the company should be much larger of the vessel size, of, larger than the vessel size of the top management. Thanks to the uh, kind of organi uh, some organization work. Instead, Indian company, I'm sorry to say that uh, there are not so many uh, uh, globally uh, famous uh, companies you know, at this point of time. Maybe it's because of the uh, size, the Indian company, even very much splendid company, but the size of the company is almost similar of the size of the top management. And maybe it, it might be caused by kind of nature, top down nature in India, and then some kind of uh, organization nature in Japan. So this is the advantage and disadvantage. And we can uh, take such advantage from the others. Uh, uh, and then we can exchange and we can mix up such kind of advantage together. Maybe we can seek more better profit or better kind of fruits of the Yeah, better, better result. Exactly. So thank you so much for joining us today and giving so much, sharing so much knowledge of yours, definitely, because um, the, both countries, businessmen, they will be very much benefited with your experience and we would love to have you again. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you and you have a lovely evening. <laughs> you too. Thank you very much. <laughs> Namaste and West Minasai. Namaste. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Subscribe now.
and press the bell icon. Never miss an update.